Hey everyone, it's uh, it's absolutely my pleasure to uh, be a part of this Hockey Minds uh, conference. Uh, thanks so much uh, for Ryan, Stacy, for having me to be a part of it. Uh, if memory serves me correct, I was his first guest on on his podcast, and uh, certainly a pleasure to have been a part of that at the time. And uh, certainly appreciate Ryan reaching out to me and asking me to be a part of this uh, this conference. Uh, fantastic idea, and and certainly with. You know, so much happening in our world right now, and you know, we haven't been able to get together for uh, for live conferences and live seminars. But I think it's great that Ryan has gone forward and, you know, is making this type of platform available to all of us who who love the game and want to see the game continue to grow. And for us, you know, with with our athletes uh, wanting their development to be a priority for all of us, and then certainly from our perspective uh, to continue our development, whether it be you know on the ice uh, in the boardroom. Uh, having these types of platforms and sharing information uh, with all those around us is an absolutely phenomenal idea and certainly a, a great platform. So congratulations, Ryan, for getting this off the ground. Uh, thanks for having me be a part of it. And I, I hope today's presentation will be informative to uh, to all of you who are watching. And uh, certainly feel free to reach out anytime uh, to me. I will provide my contact information at the end of the presentation. Um, so feel free to reach out anytime. I, I love talking hockey, love talking the business of hockey and would certainly be more than willing to help out uh, if anyone has any questions, uh, further comments or just wants to discuss, uh, you know, the world of hockey, the world of professional sports. So feel free to reach out anytime. Um, so my name is Trevor Murphy. I'm, I'm currently the senior vice president and alternate governor with the Newfoundland Growlers of the uh, ECHL. And uh, we are part of the uh, Deacon Sports Entertainment family. Uh, right now, we just actually launched two more teams, uh, the Trois Rivier Lions and the Iowa Heartlander. So we're very excited to see those two teams uh, take to the ice here this fall as part of the ECHL. And uh, certainly very excited to uh, get the Newfoundland Growlers back onto the ice. Um, you know, having won the Kelly Cup Championship in 2019, it was certainly a bit of a disheartening type season last year uh, when we had to kind of walk away from our season. Uh, but certainly very excited to get our get our players back on the ice, um, you know, here in the in the 2021 22 season. Um, you know, we, we had so many things going our way, um, not only on the ice, but also off the ice. Uh, so it'll be exciting to get our, get our team back into the fold and get things going. Um, so I just wanted to share with you quickly here just a bit of my, a bit of my background uh, to get off to a start here. Um, so. I'm from Mount Pearl, Newfoundland, and Labrador originally, uh, born and raised here in, in, in the province, and I graduated from O'Donnell High School and then went to Memorial University. And a lot of people figure that I have a sport management type background, but in actual fact, my, uh, my, my degree is an arts degree, uh, major in history, minor in political science. And uh, I started doing my education degree because my backup plan, if I didn't become a uh, hockey, hockey person, uh, I was going to be uh, a teacher. And I knew a lot of the time at the time, a lot of my Hockey Canada friends and such had teaching backgrounds. So that was kind of my my backup plan if the whole hockey thing didn't work out. But thankfully, uh, some opportunities came to be. Uh, I did a contract with the uh, the Newfoundland and Labrador Summer Games. And then that kind of opened the door for some other opportunities in, in the sporting world. And for the last, I guess, 21 years now, I have been involved, um, you know, full time uh, in professional sports and amateur sport with Hockey Canada. And certainly very thankful for those opportunities. Uh, so for, you know, for those who are out there that are part of the uh, profession right now, you understand the time and commitment it takes, um, you know, in this career. And for those of you who are looking to make that jump into the career, um, you know, I certainly encourage you to, you know, talk to people, get involved. Uh, I think volunteering is a big piece of what you need to do in terms of gaining some experience but certainly encourage you to, uh, you know, if your goal is to work in hockey and professional sports, then, you know, do what you can to make that happen and, you know, do the right things, talk to the right people. And uh, if that's a goal of yours and work hard to reach that goal. Um, after my time with the, uh, the Newfoundland Labrador Summer Games, I did go to work for Hockey Canada for, uh, for nine years. I was based out of St. John, New Brunswick. Loved my time there. Had a, I had a great opportunity to work in various aspects of the game. Uh, whether it was event management for uh, for Atlantic Championships, had the opportunity to attend numerous uh, World Championships, um, our Team Atlantic program, our high performance programs, uh, skills development, parent sessions, coach sessions, you name it, we did it at the 
at uh, the Hockey Canada office back then, and certainly certainly been a highlight of my career so far. You know, working with Hockey Canada it was a special time for me, and I certainly still have lots of friendships and relationships from those days. Uh, from there, uh, I went on to spend uh, close to three years with the Edmonton Oilers, uh, which was again another highlight for me, having a chance to work in the NHL, having to work with a, a mentor of mine, uh, Pat McLaughlin. Uh, Pat was from New Brunswick originally. He's, he's back working with Hockey Canada now out in Calgary. But certainly Pat's been a huge uh, resource and mentor to me over the years. And a, a chance to work with him on a day-to-day -day basis with the Oilers was something that I will certainly always cherish and, and always appreciate. And uh, again, as like I said, having the chance to work in the NHL during that time was something that was, that was truly special. And, and certainly look back at that with very fond memories. Uh, had a chance to come back home in uh, 2011 and working for the uh, the St. John's Ice Caps. And we had two versions of the Ice Caps. We had the Winnipeg Jets version for four years and then the Montreal Canadiens version for a, a couple of years, both very special in their own ways. Uh, the Jets were a new team at the time and um, you know a new franchise. So we were kind of getting involved right at the ground level with them and had some great players, some great coaches come through and obviously dealing with the, uh, with the Jets organization, some first class people there and uh, to see that organization continue to develop as they have has been a lot of fun to watch and some of those players who are currently uh, on their roster that the Hellebucks and the Morrisseys and the Shifleys etc you know they spent some time here in, in St. John so it was great to watch them play and then moving on to the Montreal Canadiens version of it uh, same thing you know um, you know obviously a ton of respect for the Canadiens organization and to have a chance to you know be connected to them for a couple of years uh, here in St. John's with the ice caps and seeing what Montreal does that uh, was something that was real special as well. Um, then when the, when the ice caps left, I kind of took a bit of a, <laughs> I guess, a right turn. Uh, there was a year here without hockey. So did a year of professional basketball, which was interesting. Um, again, some great experiences involved with that as well. But certainly was happy to make my return to professional hockey when the Newfoundland Growlers um, came in, in 2018-19. And then obviously that season was phenomenal. And that will basically... Um, you know, perform the, the foundation for this presentation today. Um, I, I, you know, having over 21 years, you know, in, in this uh, career right now, and even prior to that with some part-time jobs and summer jobs in sport, I've had a chance to see some very successful teams over the years, whether it be at the amateur level or the professional level. Um, but now getting a chance to, you know, have, I guess, be a part of a championship team uh, with the, uh, with the Growlers, and uh, see how that team came together uh, from its origins. Uh, that really, I guess, like I said, kind of provides the foundation for this presentation today. Um, you know, like I say, so you'll, you'll hear me talk a little bit about the Growlers during this presentation. Um, as we go through this presentation today, you know, I want you to realize that, again, this is a culmination of a lot of time spent uh, in, in my career and uh, seeing things that work and, and, and haven't worked. And uh, I'm all about, you know, successful teams and about building a team and you know as i was going through and preparing this presentation i could sense that you know i was my, my original plan was to kind of talk about the on ice piece and the off ice piece but due to time uh, restrictions and also to i think the messages that i'm going to give you today can be on the ice or in the boardroom and you'll see that as we go through here and i'm excited to share this with you and as i said at the beginning if there's any questions or you want to discuss this further by all means reach out to me anytime so, you know, I'm a big, big lover of quotes. I, I love uh, different quotes over the years. There's some different ones hanging in my office and things that I've had with me over the years. Uh, but this first one here, uh, Andrew Carnegie, you know, it's something that I'm sure a lot of coaches, a lot of hockey mental hockey people, um, you know, a lot of, um, you know, sports professionals and, and it, you know, just uh, business professionals over the years have used. Um, but, you know, teamwork is the ability to work together toward a common vision. Uh, the ability to direct individual accomplishments towards our organizational, uh, organizational objectives is the fuel that allows common people to attain on common results. And that's the thing, you know, as, as we kind of look to build a successful team, whether it be on the ice or off the ice, you're trying to find a group of individuals and make them a team. And if you can do that, then you are doing something right. And it's amazing. You know, we've heard this one a lot, but it's amazing what, you know, a team kind of can accomplish when no one cares who gets the credit. And that's what it really comes down to. And the successful teams I've been a part of over the years, whether it be in my career, uh, in my volunteer world, in my personal world, um, those are teams that we've seen be successful because people who you have around you care about the team before themselves. And that's what's wonderful about a team. And as we look to build a successful team, 
that's what we need to focus in on. So as we go forward here and we look at this, you know, if, if we're looking at success, we kind of need to determine first, you know, what success really means. And, and to different people, success can be different things. So it's important to, you know, if you're saying you want to build a successful team, well, first things you got to do is figure out what success means. And if you start to do that and you start to do that right from the start, then, hey, you're, you're off to the right, uh, you're off to the races, we'll say, and you're off to a good start with that. And, you know, like I say, in professional sports and in the hockey world, success will take on different, uh, different meanings. You know, for us with the growlers, we obviously want to be successful on the ice, but we also want to be successful off the ice as well. Part of that success for us is that, you know, we want to be, you know, top five in every league category uh, when it comes to our business operations. Um, obviously, in 2018 and 2019, we reached the top of the summit by winning the Kelly Cup Championship and, you know, winning it here in, in game six in, in our home building, which is something very special and something that we'll all remember for a very long time. So success took on some different routes that year, you know, in terms of on ice and off ice. But, you know, in terms of a day to day operation of the, the Growlers organization, you know, we want to be top five in everything that we do. And that will be successful to us. We'll have our ups and downs. We understand that. But we want to have that success on the ice and off the ice. And then, you know, in sports, championship and wins are one sign of success. But, you know, what else can you do and what else are you going to do? To make a, su a successful team and organization, you know, and, and for us right now, you know, being a part of the Toronto Maple Leafs organization with the Growlers, uh, it's something, once again, that we're so proud of. And to see our players, you know, from year one and, and even, I guess, year two until it was interrupted, seeing those players come here um, to be a part of the Growlers organization, to take their steps to be part of the Toronto Marlies organization and then hopefully in time a part of the Toronto Maple Leafs. It's, uh, it's something that we take a lot of pride in as well. So as much as we work, we're trying to develop our staff um, off the ice uh, to bigger and better things as we go here as an organization, um, our players on the ice are doing the exact same thing. And, uh, you know, the Toronto Maple Leafs have their, their tiered approach right now with respect to the ECHL, AHL and the NHL. And, um, you know, again, success will come obviously in, in wins and in championships, but also seeing those players develop and, and move to the next level. So lots of exciting things happening, certainly in our world. And we're looking to make sure that success continues here when the, when the growlers hit the ice once again, you know, in, the, in this next slide here, it's, you know, people from the outside looking in and they see success, it's kind of like a straight line. And, you know, you start at the bottom and it's just a straight line to the top. But for any of you who have been around, you know, a, a career for a while, um, you know, through your own schooling and everything else, you know, there are ups and downs, there's left turns, there's right turns, right turns, there's, there's adversity, there's, uh, there's speed bumps that you need to get over. And, um, you know, certainly, you know, if you want to be successful, you have to realize from the start, that it's going to take work, and that it will not be an overnight success. There's very, very few overnight success stories. And you know, as we go through here with professional sports, and we're trying to build a successful team, uh, you will have adversity, you will face obstacles. Um, but at the same time, there's going to be lots of wonderful, wonderful things that happen to you as well. So keeping that in mind as you go forward uh, will be an important piece as you start to build your successful team. I share this picture with you because it's one of my favorite pictures. We have it in our dressing room right now as a reminder every day of what can be accomplished when a team comes together. And, you know, as we kind of go through this presentation today, hopefully, you know, that's, that's kind of the goal, whether it's a championship trophy you're looking to raise, um, whether it's something that, you know, within, you know, internally within your own office uh, goals that you have, you know, hopefully by a team working together, you can, you can raise those goals and, and raise that trophy and, and to show the success of your team that you're having on the ice and off the ice. And as I said to you from the start of the presentation today, um, you know, this, the whole Growlers experience will be the kind of the, the basis for my presentation today. So I thought it was important to kind of start, the, you know, the meat of this presentation uh, with a picture of this, uh, you know, this uh, hoisting of the trophy, which again, holds a very special spot in my heart, obviously. And it's something that I've got some tremendous memories from uh, that night. And uh, that, that whole team in general was a, a phenomenal team uh, on and off the ice. And as there were so many memories and friendships created because of that team, uh, things won't be forgotten anytime soon. So, you know, as we look into professional sports, we start to get into a bit more of the, the meat of the subject here that, um, you know, there's a few things we need to realize here as we go forward. And, and certainly, you know, realizing that in professional sports, you know, it, it's, it's a great career. And I've been very fortunate to be involved with this. Um, but it's something that we had to remember a few things. One, obviously, there's pressure associated with it. You know, when you're dealing with professional sport, you're dealing with business. And there's, there's pressure associated with that. So as you go to build your team, 
you need to keep that in mind. And, and the same can be said for amateur sport at any level. You know, there's pressures involved. Um, so it's important to keep that in mind as you're building your team to make sure you're getting the right people. You know, within, within our world, there's a chance to climb the ladder. You know, if you're putting your time in and you're doing the right things, hopefully you get a chance to develop. Uh, hopefully you get a chance to get to the next level. Um, and hopefully you get a chance to chase those, those goals that you have for yourself as an, as an employee, as a staff person, as a coach, whatever it might be. Um, you know, so there are opportunities, but you have to do the right things uh, to get there. And you have to surround yourself with good people. And that's all about that successful team, being a part of that team. And, uh, you know, really, again, you know, working together to create that success around yourself so that you're happy with your own success, but you're even happier for your team's success. Um, you know, enjoyment, no matter what you do in, in this world, if you, if you do it and you have some fun doing it, then, hey, that's, that's a huge bonus. And we, we've heard before that if you can find and do something that you enjoy doing, then you'll never work a day in your life. And like I said, there, it's not all, you know, roses and stuff and, um, you know, unicorns when you, when you come to work in professional sports, but there are a lot of those moments. And you have to enjoy it because there are long hours and we kind of go through that here a little bit as this slide goes on, but there are a lot of long hours and, um, you know, there's weekends and there's uh, early mornings, there's late nights, but if you enjoy what you're doing and you're surrounded by positive people, uh, then it helps make those long hours worth it. And then you see the success that a team will have. Then once again, it makes it worth it, makes you want to dig down deeper and continue to strive for that success uh, on and off the ice and all that you do. You're going to meet some fantastic personalities and I've met some great people. Um, you know, I've met some people that are very well known in the hockey world. I've met some other people that, you know, very few people have heard of. Um, but I've met some absolutely outstanding people in the hockey world. And I'm sure if I was to be in a room with all of you today and asking you the same questions, you tell me the same thing that you have met some tremendous people uh, through your time in the game. And that's one of the wonderful things about the game. And I've been very lucky that with the teams that I've been a part of over the years, um, like I say, whether it's been my volunteer world, um, professional world, uh, those teams on and off the ice, I, I've seen some tremendous characters come through and some tremendous personalities. And I've learned from each and every one of them, whether they know it or not, I've learned from each and every one of them. And I continue to learn from all those people. So, you know, you're going to get a chance to meet some great people and uh, have a lot of fun along the way. I mentioned the long hours. It's not a 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. type job. So if you are looking to get into this career, be ready for it. And it, it's not a bad thing. It's a great thing, actually. And it's, every day is new. Every, every day is a new opportunity. Um, but be ready because, again, it's not a 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. You're going to need to make sacrifices and you're going to need to be surround yourself with people who are going to make sacrifices as well. So, the, you know, the young men, the young women that you have on your staff and your teams, uh, make sure that they're committed as well. And that, that ties into the next point about being passionate. Um, you know, find people that are passionate. Find people that share those same common beliefs that you do. Uh, find people um, that are committed to what you're trying to do as an organization. And whether that be players, whether that's staff, um, if you can find passionate, committed people to be part of your team, then success will follow. And, you know, there's going to be opportunities here. You know, you're going to be under the microscope with what you do, whether you're involved with a community team uh, in your local city or town, uh, whether you're involved in professional sports, you're going to be under a microscope at times. So make sure you do the right things. Uh, make sure that as a team, uh, whether it be the team on the ice or the team off the ice, you're doing things the right way. You're building an organization that you're proud of so that when you are under the microscope, you know that you're being seen in the right light and in the right way. So as we go forward here, and as I talked earlier in the presentation, this presentation is for those professionals who are looking to build a successful team on the ice or off the ice. And if you start to look, just, well, first of all, start you know, inside the boards. And where does success measured inside the board? So you start looking at you know, your wins, your losses, you know, your power play, your penalty kill, shots, goals against, goals for, face off, possession time. There's so much more in, in terms of, in today's world with analytics and everything else. Everything is being measured in the world of hockey. And these are just a sample shot of what's being measured right now. But again, I'll give you an indication of how you can look at success among a team. And, you know, obviously wins and losses um, is a very easy way uh, to look at success and whether your team is being successful or not. But there is much more to it than that. And, you know, these points here are just a, a small sampling of the things that you could be looking at in terms of 
success of your hockey team. And then, as we mentioned a little while ago, you know, even in terms of development, you know, how many of your players are moving to the next level? How many of your players are getting opportunity to play up? How many of your players are getting a chance to be seen by other teams, another league who want to see them as part of their group? Um, so that starts to be successful as well. So as you're looking to be successful on the ice, make sure you look at the big picture. Look at, look at everything that's going on around it and, and start building those blocks small so that they become something greater as you go forward. And then within, with regards to, you know, inside the boardroom or the business of hockey, you know, if you want to start looking at success, you know, all these things come into play. You know, uh, selling of tickets, uh, your community rights and advertising inventory, uh, executive suites and hospitality, uh, broadcast rights, broadcast production, um, online and media content, uh, merchandise, consumer products, community events. You know, so once again, you know, as, as a growlers organization, we're looking to be top five in all those categories. And it's, it's certainly a lot of work's needed. Uh, we've had some great people here as part of our organization striving to be a part of um, you know, to make us that top five and uh, we're working every day and there's some great teams in this league, um, you know, that we're, you know, we're chasing a little bit and we got some other teams chasing nuts, which is fantastic. And then you go back to our American hockey league days and back to my NHL experience with the Oilers, you know, it's just, you're always trying to strive to be the best you can be in whatever role you're in. And uh, that's something that's important to us. And it should be important to you as well, that no matter what role you have, strive to be the best you can be while you're doing that role. So here's another quick quote, and then uh, before we jump into, uh, you know, some of the true traits of building a successful team, but, you know, success is like a snowball. You have to get it going, and the more you roll it in the right direction, the greater it gets. And, and you'll see that with any of the teams that you've been a part of in the past, any of the teams that you'll be a part of in the future, is that once you start experiencing some success, great things will happen. And, you know, I, I think as, I, as we record this uh, presentation right now with the Montreal Canadiens and what, and what they're doing uh, here in the NHL playoffs right now, it's, it's, it's a, a fantastic story. I love the whole underdog story, but it shows that you get some confidence, you have some success, and then things just start rolling. And obviously, Curie Price has been a big part of their success so far, but the fact you've got four lines going, you've got these young players stepping up, you've got veterans who found the fountain of youth. Um, it, it's been fantastic to watch, but it started off with a little bit of success and then it just started rolling from there. And uh, we'll see where it ends up. You know, game six of that uh, that series goes tonight as I'm recording this. So we'll see where it all goes, but it's been fun to watch. But I think that's, that's a great example of success building uh, a little bit at a time and we see where it goes. So here we go. And we just kind of started to get a bit more into this presentation as we go. Uh, so the next probably six or seven slides, we're going to look at, you know, what are the elements of a successful team? So here in the early stage of the presentation, we've talked a little bit about building it and, and some kind of, you know, bigger picture type stuff. Well, now we're going to get into more of the, you know, the definite parts, the definitive parts of what a successful team has um, and what, uh, you know, a successful team needs to put in play in order to be a part of it. Um, you know, one thing that I really want to stress here as we go forward and, and, and as you go forward in this is that you need to trust the process. Um, you know, there is going to be a process. I, you know, I kind of showed that slide a few minutes ago that it's not a straight line to success. It's a very much of a, a woven line. And I, I was reading something earlier and I, every morning I read a, a, a piece or a page from it's a book called The Daily Stoic. The, sorry, The Daily Stoic. It was a book that was given to me by a great friend of mine. And it's something that I read every morning. And as I was reading it, there was a, I think it was last week, actually, there was a passage there about uh, from Nick Saban, or Nick, Nick Saban, sorry, uh, from the University of Alabama. And he talked about the process and trusting the process. And it's something that, you know, I've always believed in. And it's something that, uh, you know, different people I've been around over the years have, have believed in as well. And it's something that I, uh, I like to bring in within our organization each and every day. But it was a reminder as I read that passage to trust the process and that there is a process to success. And in this, um, in this uh, passage that uh, Nick Saban talks about, uh, he talks about ignoring the big picture. He talks about focus instead on doing the absolutely smallest things really, really well. And if the team follows that process and focuses in on the little things, and they're going to avoid a lot of obstacles because a lot of times teams are going to get caught up in the wins and losses, uh, get caught up in the opponents that are playing next. Maybe you're playing an undefeated opponent who hasn't been beaten all year that you get kind of stressed out a bit, a bit worried about. But if you as a team have done all the little things right leading up to that game happening, then you're helping to control the success that you're going to have. So, again, 
kind of the last point of his whole thing was assemble the right actions in the right order, one after another. And if you focus in on the small things and you do the small things absolutely really, really well, create good habits, you trust the process, then good things will happen for your team and success will follow. But again, don't get bogged down the big picture. Don't focus on the obstacles. Do not focus on the adversity. Trust the process. Do the small things right. Success will follow. As part of trusting the process, then you get into building your culture and building your environment. And you had to do this right from the start, because if you don't, you're going to be lost right from the start. So build your culture, build your environment, and then go from there. And then as you'll find out that if you, if you build your culture properly, you build the right environment first. Once again, success will follow wherever that success may look like. That's something that you and your team will develop, but things will follow. And you want to make sure that you're building a um, environment that will sustain itself win or lose. Because as we know, uh, no program um, in the history of sports has ever had undefeated seasons year after year after year. They may have had some very successful seasons, but there have been challenges for teams. There have been challenges for teams in the boardroom. So you had to find a group of people and you had to build yourself a team that are going to be able to sustain things when things aren't going so well. And that's an important piece. Um, you know, the year with the Growlers, we had a lot of success that year on the ice. We had a lot of success off the ice. Um, but, you know, there were speed bumps as well. And how our team reacted to that um, was a reason that we were able to continue to have success after the adversity uh, was passed. And um, it was a team that was assembled, uh, once again, on the ice and off the ice that was able to, you know, deal with adversity and deal with some ups and downs. And, uh, you know, we saw the benefits of that by a team that was able to rally around each other, have some success. Uh, but again, it, it, it started right from the beginning um, by having a solid culture, a solid environment, and then it went from there. Next, find players who will be accepting of their role. And as individuals, we all want to be on the power play. We all want to be on the penalty kill. We all want to be the first star each and every game, making that big save late in the game to win our team a championship. Um, but the successful teams have a variety of personalities, a variety of skill sets that lead to uh, the celebration and lead to the success of their team. And, um, you know, finding those players that can lead to that success, that are willing to accept their roles, that is going to be a big piece of any success that a team has. If you think back to teams that you've been a part of over the years, whether it be in any sport, whether it be hockey, baseball, soccer, whatever it might be, whether it be in the business world, if you think of the best teams you've been a part of, there's a good chance that the teams that you have had um, have been a member or sorry, have been collected or collective uh, individuals who have been working towards the same goal. Uh, people willing to accept different roles to make sure their team is successful. And it's important that, you know, you celebrate everyone on that team. And we'll talk about it a little bit further as we go on, but, you know, celebrate the accomplishments of everybody. So you may have that star player, make sure he or she is recognized. Uh, you may have that fourth line type person, make sure he or she is recognized. You know, whether it's the president of a company, you know, he or she needs to be recognized just as much as the, you know, the office admin person who's a first year, um, you know, professional, make sure that person is celebrated make sure you show him or her what, uh, what they mean to this organization. If you do that and you, uh, you find players who are accepting of the role, then once again, success will follow, but be careful of, because it's something that we've seen over the years too, is that you get people that will say they accept the role, they get into that role. They have a tough time accepting it for whatever reason. So, you know, really try to dig down, get to know these people before you hire them, before you select them for a team, get to know these people because, you know, they may say they're willing to accept a role, but until you get to know them and get to know their true personality, that's when you see whether or not they're the right person for your team. Lead your room, you know, and whether it's a boardroom or a dressing room, you need to lead your room. You need to be someone who uh, your staff, your players want to be a part of. Um, you're going to be, your, your dressing room is going to be filled with many different personalities, um, many different characters. You know, it's important for you at the start to find out, um, you know, what your players need, what your staff need, because um, everyone is different and you got to find out how each of them will react, how each of them need to be motivated uh, in order to be as successful as they can be. 
and you're going to have leaders, you're going to have followers. Um, you know, find out right away who your leaders are, who your followers are. You know, hopefully, you know, if you've done a good job of, you know, selecting your team, then hopefully there's not many followers, but we all know that's almost impossible to have a team without any followers. So just be aware of that. Identify them earlier, identify your leaders earlier and, you know, help them to be successful in what they do as individuals. And then that will obviously then help your team in all the goals they're trying to reach. It's important to make sure you do not allow the negative people in your room uh, to be the leaders of your room. Um, you need positive talk. You need positive uh, imagery. You need positive emotions. Um, you need to make sure that everything happening in your dressing room, in your boardroom is positive. So make sure that any of the people that have that kind of that negative naysay attitude, make sure they are not the leaders within your group. Hopefully, they can see that there's other opportunities. They can see that there's opportunities within the group to grow and that they'll start to become one of those positive people as well. But from the start, make sure that your positive leaders are the ones leading your group. And, you know, the last point there on this slide about leadership is more than a letter. And that's so true that, you know, some of the greatest leaders in sport have never worn a letter. Some of the greatest have also worn it. But, you know, it's important for your group to know that just because you're wearing a letter, there's more to it than just putting a, you know, a C or an A on your jersey. Um, you know, and the same thing for the players without the letter. There's leadership capabilities, there's leadership qualities within each of us. And finding a way to bring out those leadership abilities in our group among each and every player you have, that's something that we need to strive as with regards to whether it be management, leadership type roles, or whether it be a player type role. Find ways to get the best out of everyone on your team. So going back to the process, and then this is something that you need to plan, you need to believe, and you need to execute your plan for building a successful team. You know, create your plan, a blueprint for what your team will be and what you want the team to be. Believe in that plan, execute that plan. And you just need to surround yourself with others who will believe that as well. You do not want to surround yourself with people who will be yes people, saying yes to you every time you have an idea. You want people who support you, who are in it for the right reasons, but you want people who are going to challenge you sometimes. You're going to want people around you who are going to encourage you to think outside the box. You're going to, you want people around you who are creative and uh, do bring different ideas to the table. Because when you have those people around you, that's when teams grow. That's when teams develop. That's when teams get to a brand new level. And yes, you need everyone committed. You need everyone you know, pulling, on the, pulling the same way on the rope but you do not need a bunch of yes people sitting around your table or sitting around your dressing room. Find people that will believe in the, the plan, that will help you build that plan, and that will help you execute the plan, but make sure you have the right collection of people that share the common beliefs of what you want, but are willing to bring different ideas to the table to make those, uh, those dreams and those goals a reality. I kind of touched on this one a little bit a few slides ago, but Take the time to celebrate your goals. Celebrate the achievements among your group. If you want a team to be successful, you've got to make sure that you're given those fist bumps, you're given the high fives, you're given just the little things during the course of a season that recognize the contributions of your team. Um, I was reading some stuff uh, recently, and I, I don't think it would be a coaching conference or a hockey conference if you didn't mention Roger Nielsen as part of our presentation um, but I was reading something about Roger Nielsen and he had something he called game honors and he would recognize players after every game uh, for things that they did on the ice to make their team successful. Obviously, a lot of times it was the guys who scored the big goal, uh, the players who made you know, the big save, made the big hit, whatever it might have been. But there was a player on his team that wasn't a superstar type player, but but he spoke about how Roger Nielsen made him feel a part of the team, how he made him feel special numerous times during the course of the season because of the way he did these game honors. And he made a specific category for those players who may not be the superstar type player. So maybe they block a shot. Maybe they make good line changes. Maybe they're a leader on the bench, whatever it might be. Roger Nielsen made sure that he honored those players at different times during the season. So they realized they were just as valuable as that player who scores the goals, that superstar type player who makes the big save. 
everyone on your team is valuable. Everyone on your team can bring something special to your group. Make sure that you've recognized all of them. Make sure you celebrate their achievements. It's important as individuals. It's also important as a team to make sure that you're celebrating achievements throughout the course of the year. And another great one, I, I remember reading this years ago, I think in a children's book is where I first read it, but fill your players' buckets. By that, I'm sure some of you heard this before. If you haven't, quite simply, that if you can imagine that your players or your staff are walking around with a bucket and every time you give them a compliment, you're putting, you're putting something in their bucket, you're filling their bucket. But every time you say, say something negative, uh, whether there's kind of a negative vibe in your office, negative vibe towards your, your player or your staff person, then you're taking stuff out of their bucket. You want to be a bucket filler. You want to be that person who fills the buckets of your staff, fills the buckets of your players. Do the right things. Celebrate success. Make sure people know when they're doing the right things. Fill those buckets every chance you get. Finding the right coach. Um, <laughs> I cannot stress how important this is if you're building your team. And let's let's go to the boardroom first. If you're trying to build a successful team in the boardroom, find that leader, find that president, find your senior management team that are the right people to lead your group. Find that right person. Take it inside the dressing room. Find that coach who's going to inspire and motivate uh, the players in that room. The kind of coach that players will run through a wall for. Um, that's the kind of coach you want. Um, you know, with the growth, if we look at our experience, so in year one, uh, Ryan Klo was a, someone, who I, someone who I've known for a long time. It was tremendous to follow his career as a player, um, as a uh, professional within the game. And then for us to have him as a coach in our first year, he set the tone early for what he wanted his team to be. And he made it very clear to his staff um, to our organization, to our players, what the Newfoundland Growlers organization was going to be about. Um, so he set the tone. He was the right man for the job to start the season uh, for the Newfoundland Growlers in our inaugural year. Unfortunately, uh, Ryan wasn't able to finish the season uh, due to some, uh, some medical concerns relating to his playing past, um, but he remained a part of our organization. He remained behind the scenes. And then we were very, very fortunate to have an assistant coach at the time, John Snowden, who basically made a seamless transition into the head coaching role for the remainder of the season. And John and Ryan became real close during the start of the year. Uh, John um, believed in what Ryan was trying to do uh, with our organization. Uh, John believed in the whole culture aspect and building that environment um, of what we want the Growlers to be. And from that, uh, great things happened. And so when we had Ryan Klo, we had John Snowden, and um, then we surrounded ourselves with people like Daryl Williams and Paul Dagg and Merrick Benda and many others who became part of that staff that year. We had the right people in place. And because we had the right people in place, um, it, it was something special happened that year. And like you said, when we faced adversity, we dealt with it. When we had uh, times to celebrate, we did it. And uh, great things happened because of our coaching staff that year. And um, I, again, whether it's amateur hockey, whether it's professional hockey, whatever it might be, finding that coach and setting the tone early in the season is such an important part of that. So find the right coach, uh, know your players, know your personnel, get the right person to lead them. You wanna create a learning environment and we're, we're kind of nearing the end here, just a couple of last things. Um, but create an environment that your team never stops learning. Um, I, I'm a believer that, you know, if you are in an environment and you think you know it all, you're in trouble. Uh, you want an environment that um, you never stop learning, whether you're a player, whether you're a staff person, whether you're part of the leadership team of a, uh, of a team, you never want to stop learning. And if you ever feel like you've gotten to a point where you've, where you stop learning new things, then maybe it's a time to look at another opportunity. But I think in the world that we live in here in this hockey world, things are evolving so much. You know, if you look at the last few years and the role of analytics in our game, that is something that was not prevalent, you know, let's say 15 years ago. But now it's a huge piece of our game. So you need to keep learning um, from a player perspective. You know, the amount of time and the, the concentration that's given in terms of their development on the ice with development staff and development coaches. 
You have to keep up with what's happening. You have to keep up with the game. Things are moving at a very fast pace on and off the ice. You've got to keep up with it. So keep creating an environment and a culture that encourages learning, encourages development. And, you know, if you're a young coach watching this or a young professional watching this, I, I struggle with this early in my, uh, my coaching days, is that for some reason I felt that it was a sign of weakness for me to bring someone in who was maybe smarter than me, maybe had more experience than me. It might be a sign of weakness to my players or to my staff. Um, but I quickly realized and quickly learned that that was the wrong thinking. Um, I started to bring in people who knew more. I started to bring in people who I respected. I had more experience uh, with teams that I was coaching, um, with organizations I was involved with. And I quickly realized that I learned a lot from that. Um, the organizations that I was involved with, it, with, with learned a lot. And the players that I was involved with learned a lot. And uh, from there, um, it, was, it was a great move on my part which was great for me personally, but it was also a great move for my, my players and my staffs, which was the most important thing. So even though I was experiencing, experiencing um, you know, a chance for me to learn and a chance for me to develop, the most important thing was that my staff and my players were getting a chance to develop. And that's what it's all about. You know, put, put team ahead of yourself, um, bring people in that will help your team. And um, in turn, you'll see success follow there as well. And finally, um, just to kind of start to clue things up here, you know, we, we can talk about culture, we can talk about, uh, you know, the environment, we can talk about coaching, we can talk about celebration of success, but at the end of the day, you know, to make all those things happen, you have to find talent. And, um, you know, I'm a big believer that, yes, talent is important, but finding the right talent is even more important. Um, I've, I've been a part of teams over the years that we had very, very talented teams but didn't win a whole lot because looking back at it, whether it was a coaching staff, whether it was management, we didn't select the right players. We had good talent, but we didn't select the right talent. Lessons learned. We changed um, our objectives. We changed our goal. We changed our mentality about getting the right players. And uh, one of the great examples I can think of was going back to our team Atlantic program and without getting into certain years and certain players or anything else, you know, we spent a lot of time looking to get, you know, the most talented players on the ice. We made a change um, in one year and started looking to get the right players on the ice. And we were successful in terms that we won a bronze medal that year. We had some small successes before that. And again, depending on how you define success, but that bronze medal uh, was the first time uh, that Team Atlantic ever won a medal. And I look back um, to the coaching staff, to the management group, uh, putting a lot of time into selecting the right players and making the right decisions when it came to um, players and personnel. And that was something special. And that was at the amateur level. And I've seen the same at the professional level. And again, using our growlers as an example of bringing the right players, the right talent in, um, it made a difference. And uh, we've seen success follow because of that. So as you go out there, as you build your team off the ice, as you build your team on the ice, you need to find talent, but make sure it's the right talent, the right people that you're bringing in to be a part of your team. And, you know, I think when you find talent, when you find the right people, um, you know, when you build a plan, you execute a plan, you celebrate success. Uh, this picture that I'm showing you right now is a great example of what can happen. And uh, there's only one team each year in every league that can be a championship team. Uh, fortunately for us, that 2019 uh, Newfoundland Growlers were, were a championship team. And, uh, you know, you see that staff, you know, you see the, the staff, the people behind the team. And there's even a greater team behind the team in terms of our business operations staff who weren't in that picture. Um, but certainly that was a special group of people on the ice and off the ice. And then hopefully if you're building that successful team, you'll have a picture like that as well that you can hang on your wall and uh, something you can look at each and every day. And, you know, you're creating memories for life with those champions, uh, with those championship teams and with your, with your championship teams on the ice and off the ice, you're doing special things that no one can ever take away from you. So I, I wish you well as you build your team. And again, hopefully you're having that championship photo here real soon as well. Just as a, as a final slide here, and I mentioned this from the start, um, once again, I want to say thanks to Ryan for having me be a part of this presentation. I hope you learned something from it. 
it's not rocket science. It's stuff you may have heard before, but I'm a big believer you can never hear positive messages enough. So hopefully you've taken something from this presentation today. Um, here, here's my name, my phone number, uh, my email, uh, my, my Twitter handle. Um, by all means, I, I mean this sincerely, reach out to me anytime. I, I love talking hockey. I love talking with uh, experienced professionals. I love talking with people who are just getting involved in the industry. Um, but please reach out anytime. And I would love to talk uh, talk hockey with you, love to talk career, whatever it might be. If I can help in any way, I, I've had so many great mentors um, over the years that have been good to me. And uh, certainly here within the Growlers, you know, with uh, with Glenn Stanford, he's been a great mentor to me, um, you know, over the years through the Growlers, to the Ice Caps. Um, again, I want to be able to hopefully assist some young professionals uh, as they continue on in, in, in with their goals and their objectives. So. Again, if I can be help you out anyway, please do not hesitate to reach out. I would love to be able to speak to you and help you out anyway. So really appreciate your time today. Hope you found it beneficial. And again, thanks to Ryan Stacy for having me part of this con uh, this conversation, this conference, and to all of you. Best of luck. Uh, enjoy the ride. It can be a ride full of ups and downs, but many more ups. And it's something that uh, you'll look back on in, in your future and uh, be thankful for, be grateful for. And um, again, I hope you have as many great experiences as I've had over my career and, and hopefully in my career to come. And hopefully we'll cross paths along the way. But have a great summer. Thanks for being a part of this conference and thanks for your time today.